there and welcome to Arirang News. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Na Hyun Kyung. 52 crewmen are still missing after a Korean operated trawler went down in the Bering Sea off Russia's far eastern coast on Monday. Only eight were rescued initially, with one already confirmed dead. All the missing are feared to be dead as there was no good news from overnight rescue operations. Park Ji won has the latest. Korea's foreign ministry said Tuesday morning that no more people had been rescued overnight. Around the time of the sinking on Monday afternoon local time, eight people on a small life raft were rescued by a nearby ship, one Russian, three Filipinos, three Indonesians and one Korean. But the Korean crewman later died of hypothermia. Officials say the crew of the Orion 501 was made up of 35 Indonesians, 13 Filipinos, 11 Koreans and one Russian. 52 people are still missing. Rescue operations are said to be ongoing, but weather and water conditions are making search efforts very difficult. The owner of the trawler, Sajo Industries, says that while the exact cause of the sinking is not yet known, it's believed that the boat began to list sharply after high winds and choppy waters caused seawater to flood its storage holes. The boat, built in 1978, was bought by Sajo Industries from a Spanish company in 2010. Industry experts say vessels that have been operation for more than 20 years are at greater risk of sinking than newer ones. The Orion 501 left Korea's southern port city of Busan in July to fish for Pollock in the Bering Sea. The boat was scheduled to return to Busan this month. Park ji Arirang News. Now, a plenary session at the National Assembly was originally scheduled for 2 p.m., but it has been delayed. No word on when that session will begin just yet. Rival party lawmakers are still hashing out the last-minute details of next year's budget bill. Here's our National Assembly correspondent, Chi Myung-gil, with more. Having narrowed their differences on a number of issues, Korea's two main rival parties have agreed to pass next year's 340 billion U.S. dollar budget at Tuesday's plenary session. The ruling Henry Party and opposition New Politics Alliance for Democracy have agreed to allocate some $85 million for President Park Geun-hye's vision of a creative economy. They agreed to subsidize a free child care program using the Education Ministry's budget and to scale back on corporate tax reductions. They've also accepted the government's proposal to increase cigarette prices by an average of $1.80 per pack starting next year. However, the parties are still at loggerheads over tax-related bills attached to the 2015 budget. The ruling's Henry Party is calling for tax breaks for companies that increase investments, wages and dividend payments, instead of sitting on piles of cash reserves. The move is in line with the government policies aimed at fueling domestic consumption. But the opposition party says unnecessary tax cuts are being given to local companies. If an agreement isn't reached on the tax-related issues, the two parties plan to vote on them separately as auxiliary bills. Regardless of that outcome, the National Assembly is set to pass next year's budget Tuesday. If and when they do, it will mark the first time they've passed a budget by the legal deadline in 12 years. Shim young Arirang News. U.S. President Barack Obama is showing a strong commitment to bridge the divide between police and the African-American community amid the fallout from racially charged protests in Ferguson, Missouri. He says it's going to be different this time because he is deeply invested in making sure it is. Our Lee ji has more. Inside the White House on Monday, President Barack Obama held a series of meetings focused on what can be learned from the situation in Ferguson. When any part of the American family does not feel like it is being treated fairly, uh, that's a problem for all of us. America continues to react to the Ferguson grand jury decision to not indict white police officer Darren Wilson in the fatal shooting of unarmed black teenager Michael Brown. In response, President Obama is calling for a three-year, $263 million U.S. dollar spending package to reform policing in the U.S. 
This package would include expanded police training programs with $75 million set aside to buy 50,000 body cameras for police officers. The president is also setting up a special task force chaired by a police commissioner and a university professor. They are going to co-chair a task force that is not only going to reach out and listen to law enforcement, community activists, other stakeholders, but is going to report to me specifically in 90 days with concrete recommendations, including best practices for uh, communities where law enforcement and, and uh, neighborhoods are working well together. Those at the meeting said the president seemed serious about bridging deeply rooted divisions. The NFL said Monday that it will not punish the St. Louis Rams players who on Sunday walked onto the field with their hands raised, mimicking those who protested the Michael Brown shooting with hands up, don't shoot gestures. The St. Louis Police Officers Association said the gesture was, quote, tasteless, offensive, and inflammatory, and it demanded an apology. Lee Jun, Arirang News. Now, the producers of the movie The Interview say their system was hacked, leaving the movie and three others not yet released leaked online. There is speculation that North Korea may be behind this attack as the movie interview revolves around the plot to assassinate North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. Shin Se-min reports. You want us to kill the leader of North Korea? Yes. What? When the trailer for the Hollywood movie The Interview was released earlier this year, North Korea made it very clear they weren't happy about it. We're going to North Korea! They called the comedy, which centers around a CIA plot to assassinate North Korean leader Kim Jong un, a wanton act of terror, and even penned a letter to the United Nations to complain. Could they have escalated their attack on the movie through an actual cyber attack? The online networks of Sony Pictures, which produced the interview, went down last week. Employees of the company found themselves locked out of their computers, which showed the phrase hacked by GOP, or the Guardians of Peace, which was claimed responsibility for the attack. It's been costly for Sony. At least five of the company's films, four of which haven't been released yet, were leaked online, costing Sony tens of millions of dollars in damages. In response, Sony said the theft of content was considered a criminal matter and that they're working to address the issue. The FBI is investigating, and many are wondering whether North Korea could have had a hand in it, with the interview set to be released on Christmas Day in the U.S. The North has so far refused to deny any involvement. Shin Se-min, Arirang News. Global oil prices, after being on a downward spiral in recent months, posted their biggest daily gains since 2012. Now, this rebound comes amid concerns that oil prices may have started to hurt U.S. shale gas production. Our Hwang Ji-hae has the details. U.S. oil rebounded from a five-year low rising more than 4 percent on Monday. Crude finished up nearly $3 or 4.3 percent at $69 per barrel. That marks the largest daily gain since August 2012. The benchmark Brent crude also jumped roughly 3.5 percent to finish at $72.54 per barrel, its biggest one-day gain in two years. The rise in international oil prices comes as investors look for a bottom price after OPEC decided not to trim production last week. U.S. and Brent crude have dropped for five straight months, the longest downward spiral since the 2008 financial crisis. The prices have lost 40 percent compared to their peak in June. 
But the market is rising back up as the U.S. shale oil industry responds to the tumbling oil prices. In late Monday afternoon trading on Wall Street, shares of shale energy companies extended their losing streak for a second consecutive session, dropping around 5%. OPEC's dominance in the oil market has been under threat in the face of growing output from Russia and shale oil production in the U.S. Hong Jie, Arirang News. But there are industries in Korea benefiting from the falling oil prices, and one of them is the airliners. It had a slow start to the year, but coupled with other factors, airline officials are breathing a sigh of relief for now. Kim min explains. Tumbling oil prices and the rise of direct purchasing from overseas could give Korea's struggling airline industry the shot in the arm it needs. The decline in crude prices has led to an overall reduction in costs for airlines, which means they are able to entice customers with cheaper fares and cut rates for cargo deliveries. Korean Air, the nation's number one carrier, says it has saved nearly 120 million U.S. dollars this year thanks to the drop in oil prices. Jet fuel on the Singapore market was selling at $126 a barrel early this year, but its value had plunged by around a third to $87 as of the end of November. Korea's low-cost carriers have also been benefiting as fuel expenses account for 45 percent of their overall operating costs. Falling oil prices also means lower fuel surcharges, which in turn means more passengers and more cargo. According to Korea's transport ministry, nearly 7.5 million passengers took flights in, out and around Korea in October. That's more than 15 percent higher than the same month last year. Cargo volume also jumped 5 percent over the same period. And with increased shipments due to the shopping holiday known as Black Friday, Korean Air has deployed an additional 26 cargo planes. However, industry watchers warn that oil prices and exchange rates can quickly turn on their head, especially given the ongoing uncertainties in some advanced economies. Kim min Arirang News. There are renewed concerns that the country might be sliding toward deflation. Statistics Korea says prices rose 1 percent last month from a year earlier with core inflation, which excludes highly volatile oil and food prices, standing at 1.6 percent, the slowest on-year increase in 15 months. A government official told Korea's Yonam News that a near $2 rise in cigarette prices next year should help pull the nation's inflation rate into the 2 percent range next year. Electric cars are considered among the most environmentally friendly vehicles you can get, but new research suggests the issue is not as black and white as it seems, not in Korea at least. According to a report by the Korea Finance Corporation, when we consider the electricity used to charge a car's battery, Carbon emissions translate to 86 grams per kilometer on the road. And while that's lower than the 107 grams emitted by Chevy's compact gasoline-powered Spark, it's only around 20 percent less. That's because Korea generates nearly 70 percent of its electricity through the burning of fossil fuels, meaning electric vehicles, while greener, are still emitting carbon every time they are plugged in. Goldman Sachs expects Korea's benchmark Cosby to reach a fresh high of 2,300 at some point next year, up considerably from this year's high of around 2,000. Kwon Goo-hun, co-head of Korean research at Goldman Sachs, says the agency is basing its prediction on improvements in external factors. It expects growth of around 7 percent in Korean exports in 2015 as currency conditions improve following a gradual depreciation of the Korean currency boosted by the appreciation of the U.S. dollar. In particular, shares related to the IT, banking and securities sectors were pointed out as promising. Bringing you the fresh updates from stories breaking in Korea and abroad.
we give you a bigger and better picture of the world. Join Na Hyung Young live from Seoul every weekday only on Arirang. Earlier this year, the U.S. state of Virginia passed and signed into law a bill requiring school textbooks there to refer to the body of water between Korea and Japan as both the Korean name East Sea and Japanese name Sea of Japan. Delegate Mark Kim helped lead this historic change, and Arirang's Hwang Sung-hee had a chance to sit down with him. Take a look. Years. When they saw that name designated in a way that brings back those historic inaccuracies, they realized that the best thing that they could do is ask for a redress of this body here. He led the efforts to let the students in the U.S. state of Virginia know that the body of water between Korea and Japan is not only known as the Sea of Japan, but also the East Sea. Despite criticisms that a global issue had waded into local politics and into school textbooks, Virginia House District Delegate Mark Kim said the bill was a domestic issue. Korea and U.S. is uh, building and in increasing our trade opportunities. If you have Virginia kids growing up and uh, possibly having a job that allows them to travel to Korea, we want them to understand there are some disputes. We don't want them walking in blindly and finding out that they are taught one version when they're dealing with uh, Korean business people. The bill, which was passed and signed into law earlier this year, was a small victory for Korea in a centuries-old feud with Japan. Kim does not plan to introduce more history-related bills, but says a similar campaign can always be replicated. So many issues that we deal with in America, we need Korean-American voices there, and right now that's not being heard. So I'm hoping that this experience of uh, passing the EC bill will give them that motivation and the roadmap to say this is exactly what we want to do. We want to go to our government and redress our grievances with them the way the Constitution promises it. The Korean community is growing. I think its number is somewhere around 2 million. How can we get a more prominent presence in the U.S.? We don't have anybody in Congress that's advocating for peace reunification, hostility to be withdrawn in North Korea, human rights issues that are happening. Nobody who's of our background speaking on those issues in Washington, D.C. So I think unless and until we have Korean Americans that are affecting our policies at the national level, I don't think we can say that we're quite there yet. Hwang Sang-hee, Arirang News. Seoul and Washington are in the final stages of revising a civilian nuclear cooperation deal, but it's unclear if an agreement will be reached before the year or the end of this year. Negotiations on the revision have been ongoing for more than four years now over the Nuclear Energy Pact, which was signed back in 1974. It bans Seoul from enriching uranium or reprocessing spent fuel. Seoul wants those restric restrictions be lifted but Washington remains reluctant due to proliferation concerns. South Korea wishes to finalize revisions by the year's end to allow enough time for legislative approval. The pact was originally set to expire in March of this year, but was pushed back to 2016 after the two sides failed to come to an agreement. Women in Korea are less likely to be in work than those in other developed countries due to the difficulty achieving the right balance between their work and private life. This problem has long been recognized and there are efforts to turn the tide. Kwon Soa has the story. We had a report about how the average Korean woman is almost forced to choose between her career. While more women are entering the workforce here in Korea, the glass ceiling certainly remains. Lack of economic participation by women in Korea. The problems Korean women face in the world of work seem to hit the headlines on almost a daily basis. Experts say that while women have the education and skills to flourish in the labor market, societal issues and family circumstances often stand in their way. As women in Korea are expected to outnumber men next year for the first time ever, domestic and international leaders are emphasizing now more than ever the importance of raising the labor participation rate of women. This was stressed at a conference on Monday, where international heads said Korea's job market needs to become more flexible towards women, referring to the country's long working hours and difficulties faced by those returning from maternity leave. 
They, however, said it's a good thing that the Korean government is very committed to the issue. The government has been developing diverse policies to support women to maintain their career while keeping work-life balance. One of these core policies is the family-friendly cooperation certification. That policy gives incentives to family-friendly companies, making more quality part-time positions available and providing assistance to female re-employment support centers were also mentioned. International leaders say the Korean government's goal of raising the female labor participation rate to 70 percent in 2017 from the current 55 percent is ambitious but attainable. Uh, the country has extremely highly educated uh, pool of educated women, which is a very good baseline to start. Secondly, it has very clear policies, not only policies, but plans how to get there. Uh, and I think now it's just a matter of implementation. Kwon Soa, Arirang News. Just how far would you go to meet consumer demands? Well, companies in the U.S. are starting to implement robotic technologies to expedite their shipping process. Kim Hyun-bin takes a closer look. Black Friday may get all the headlines as the busiest shopping day of the year. But Cyber Monday has become a force in its own right over the past few years. The day invented to encourage online shopping has grown alongside the online shopping trend with sales this year reaching an all-time high, up 8.7 percent, compared to last year, according to IBM Digital Analytics benchmark. The increased demand for online shopping, not just on Cyber Monday, but all year round, is prompting companies to find new ways to expedite the shipping process. Amazon is setting the standard by taking advantage of robot technology. Scores of box-shaped robots move freely across the warehouse. They scan barcodes on the floor and take orders wirelessly from central computers. Once an order is received, the robots find the item and bring it to a warehouse employee. These are the robots Amazon is using in its shipping centers to reduce shipping times and enhance efficiency. Over 15,000 robots are working in 10 of Amazon's shipment centers across the U.S. Whereas it used to take Amazon an average of an hour and a half to get a package out the door, the robots have cut the time to as little as 13 minutes. These Orange 145-kilogram robots were developed by Kiva Systems, a robotic company that Amazon bought out in 2012 for $775 million. The automation approach we take is all about using automation to, to improve and to help the associates do their job. It's not replacing associates doing their job. Competitors like Google are also jumping on the bandwagon developing new drone technologies that they expect will be able to cut delivery time drastically in the very near future. Kim Hyun-bin, Arirang News. The cold weather continues. I'm Michelle Park here with the latest weather update. Now the temperatures have dropped below zero across the country and the current temperature in Seoul is at minus six degrees, but it feels more like minus 13 due to the wind chill. Now, snow continues to fall in Tolado and Chungcheong the provinces while there are heavy snow warnings and advisories in effect through both Tolado provinces. Now, these regions are expected to get about 10 more centimeters of snow through tomorrow while the surrounding areas will get between 1 and 5. Now, besides the cold the end of snow, the sky is pretty clear today with sunny skies due to the wind and high pressure front. And two other uh, regions for readings and Seoul will get up to zero this afternoon. Meanwhile, the southern cities such as Gwangju and Busan will be topping out to two and five degrees. And two other regions, Jeju Island peaks to six while Tokyo hits zero degrees, while Mount Gangang will be way below at minus 13. Well, that's all for now. I'm Michelle Park and have a wonderful day. And that's the end of our newscast. I'll be back with more updates at 6 p.m. Korea time. Do join me again then.